Kendrick and J. Cole in the last week have had some tracks that have leaked that have hit the internet. I'm going to start with the J. Cole stuff first. The J. Cole track, um, it's called Javari, and was featured in his docu- HBO documentary that came out before the For-, For Your Eyes Only album. Now, I remember watching that documentary and being like, yo, there were a couple songs in there that I was like, yo, why did those not make the album? This song, Javari, was one of them. Uh, and it's a, it's a pretty solid song, and I have to listen. I only listened to it once, to be fair, but it's pretty solid in him sort of talking about uh, somebody getting caught up in the street life and, and sort of moving moving through that. And it was really good. It's like a four-verse song. It's a very long song. Um, and it sounded, you know, it sounds finished. So it was done. And it's good. But, you know, always excited for some new J. Cole. Kendrick, on the other hand, three songs uh, leaked last week. One is called Guilty Conscious, and it is clear play of Kendrick doing different vocal sounds, kind of like Eminem and Dr. Dre's Guilty Conscious song. And it's kind of that that same sort of playoff of that. It's clearly unfinished. It's not mixed. Uh, I was like kind of like whatever with the song. I didn't really need a continuation of Guilty Conscious. Now, the other two songs he has, one is called Somebody, also clearly not mixed or finished. Kendrick doing a little bit of vocals in it. Sounds good. But I want to talk about the third song that was released by Kendrick. This song is called Prayer. And I've seen some people say this, and I do not even th- I do not think it's hyperbolic in any kind of way. I actually think there's some seriousness to this. This might be one of the best songs I've ever heard Kendrick write. I don't say things like that too easily, but it's a really good song. It sounds close to finish. I don't know if there's supposed to be a, a, hu- a hook. It's what you would probably consider soft rock or yacht rock in that sort of genre. Very light piano with a little guitar rift. Very Kendrick flowing easily over this. But it's the concept of this song that really gets me. Um, I, I don't want to give away exactly all the details of it to, to spoil stuff for people. But what I will say is it, it talks about, Kendrick is kind of talking about the discussion of do we separate art from morality, right? And do we judge the art that's out there by the morals of the person? Now, we kind of heard Kendrick touch on this on Mortal Man. He talks about Michael Jackson and Dr. Martin Luther King, two people who actually mentioned again in this song in two different verses, but it's how he executes it that is really dope. The first verse of the song, I'll just say, the first verse of the song, he raps from the perspective of Michael Jackson, the song ABC that was released from Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5 in the 70s, getting a date. But he actually says the date in the song. And it's from that perspective and wondering how we then view Michael Jackson through the lens of somebody who's created this great art and all the other problematic things that were alleged around Michael Jackson involving children. The second verse is from the perspective of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech and all the great things that came with that. But as some people may know or may not know, uh, is well known that Martin Luther King, you know, was involved with seeing some other women on the side from Coretta. It's very well known. He was dipping in different, you know, things and interests of different women beside Coretta Scott King, the great Coretta Scott King. But does it change the way we look at him and the words and the message that he might have had in the I Had Dream speech? In the third verse, Kendrick kind of brings it all together, kind of bringing up this larger question, do, are we able to separate the art from the rally. It's very well written. It's over a beautiful beat. Um, I think it's an excellent concept. In a way, I'm kind of mad I heard it. I couldn't resist, and I had to listen to it. I'm kind of mad. It's I haven't yet. It so feels... No, yeah, so I'm intrigued to hear what you think about when you hear it. It sounds perfect for an album. It sounds perfect. It could be an album closer, but it's just beautiful writing. Um, Kendrick naturally flows on this. The writing is just is just brilliant. It's extremely poetic. Um, it's what you would expect from him, but it, it has me excited for whatever his next album is. Because when you hear stuff like this, you're like, oh, this got leaked? Or this is a throwaway? Or for whatever reason, it got leaked. Sample clearances, this happens, stuff happens all the time, for whatever or, reason. Or, or, or it may have been intentional from someone in that Kendrick Lamar group to be like, all right, let's see what people think about this sort of rough yeah. cut. That's yeah. possible, too. Yeah, that stuff is all, can, has always been done in the game, but... Uh, it has me excited. I definitely think people should check that out. If you don't check out the other two Kendrick tracks, I think it's fine because they're not polished or finished songs. But Javari by J. Cole, that's out there. You can find it. Uh, Prayer by Kendrick, both out there. Uh, you know, and it also brings up the possibilities. We still like to see that J. Cole Kendrick album. I know I would. So yeah. we, 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 we will see. Black Hippie, 
Nas and Premier, probably Jay and Nas. Let's like let's let's, let's 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 stop at that for one second because mm-hmm. Brian just went right talked about something in what he just said that I said why not why not tack it on to this one for your mind. Brian sent me a link yesterday to a um, interview a Nas interview with Torre yeah. and Nas Torrey, doing the interview now. Huh. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. doing a lot. It was album time, so he's, he's doing a lot. Torre asked Nas if. He had he asked him a couple questions, so I want to set this up right. He asked him, would they ever see a project with him and Large Professor? I wouldn't mind seeing that. I'd be fine with that. He then Give asked motives and I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> he then asked him, Will we see a project? It's been rumored for many years. Nas fans know this as long as me many years, him and Primo. And Nas gave a look <laughs> that is very similar to look Brian has on his face now, which is like, yo, I could say put something. His yeah, I put his finger on his mouth. I could say something, but I wouldn't say something, which makes me think something is coming on the way. And I will have to say this. There's probably maybe five to seven hip-hop albums that I've been desiring for a long time that I'd really, really like to see. This is probably at the top of that list. If Nas does the album with Primo, I don't care if he puts anything else ever else out again. I don't. I literally wouldn't care. Like Nas, I want you to keep making music. I love you. I love you, my brother. But it doesn't even matter. I've wanted this for so bad. I don't think there is a literal better pairing of a producer and rapper than Nas and DJ Premier. I mean, Primo, everybody knows that's my favorite producer. I think him and Nas have made great music together. They do not have a bad song. They have fantastic songs over a variety of styles. I would love to see it. And I also want to note, Brian, in other interviews, Nas has talked about working on another project that he can't talk about right now that he's going to, supposed to follow this King's Disease up. And I'm wondering if it's the project with DJ Premier. Yeah. So I wonder that too. But also, right after King's Disease came out, I think it was that very next week, uh, a video came out. And I sent this to you of him in the studio with Dr. Dre. Yeah. And Dre was like, Dre was, you know, Dre was doing Dre shit. And then you hear the verse, you hear the, yeah, you know, Dre is just one of one, legit one of one in music. And then you're talking about like Nas is there and you're hearing the verses, people in the studio, whatever, they're listening to what it was and the song sounded, sounded really good. You know what I mean? It was one of those. So I'm like, all right, so what, so it, it see, maybe Nas has his hands in a lot of things. He kind of hinted to Teray as such like, yeah, I'm, you know, I want to be more active again is kind of what he was saying, right? Like, he went away for a long time when life is good. I mean, he has some things to take care about, uh, take care of, uh, investments, obviously, and then the aftermath of him and Khalees' split. And then uh, Nazir came out in 18, which is really just an EP. And then The Lost Tapes was a compilation of old joints. Um, and then it's like, you know, King's Disease is really the first full-length Nas project in eight years. The first one that obviously took a lot of time to, and I know he loves the Nazir project, but that was the EP, so that's a different sort of category. So, you know, if we're going to get more Nas, and if he's going to keep aging the way he is and doing, you know, putting out projects as good as King's Disease for however many years, you know, then great. You know, obviously I'm going to be here for it because, and this is why I was so excited about King's Disease, because I don't know how many more albums we're going to get from these legacy acts because these guys could walk yeah. away at any point and the, be fine. The one thing I took from that interview, Torre, before we wrap, is I feel like it sounds to me like Nas wants to do a lot of these projects or intrigued in doing these projects. It, where he it sounds locks like in, he has a bucket list, right? A locking in like with these producers, a yeah. A list of items he wants to get to. Like, I want to do a Primo joint. I want to do the Swiss Beats one is another one they talked about. Large Professor. Me personally, I would love it if Jay and Nas were to get together for even if it's the EP, like six songs or whatever. Oh, I'm but I would for that. love if Jay Z and Nas could put that out as sort of like this super collab of arguably the two best to ever do it. I would love for that to happen also. Mm-hmm.